So today's video is going to be a little bit short and a little bit boring. What a way to start a YouTube video, I know. Now, if you follow me just for my keyboard stuff, you might want to skip this one because we're not going to really talk about keyboard stuff today. But this does actually apply to keyboard stuff because if you want to make a full set of keycaps, you need biocompatible resins. It's just kind of how it works. Um, this also would kind of apply to FDM printed keycaps too because they are contacting your skin, but that's way less likely to cause issues, so I wouldn't worry too much about that. But what we're going to be talking about today is biocompatible resins and specifically Soraya Tech Blue, which recently, about six, seven months ago, got ISO 10993-10 certified to not cause issues with skin sensitization once it's properly cured. Their curing process is a little bit in-depth. You basically need to wash it in two baths of alcohol, and then you have to bake it, and then you have to cure it for like 20 minutes, and then it is considered ISO 10993-10. We're going to hop onto my iPad here and take a look at the two test reports that they actually provided. They provided two of them, an intracutaneous reactivity test, which is essentially injecting the actual material under the skin of rabbits to see if it causes an issue. And then they also included the skin sensitization test, which is the one that is more applicable to what we're going to be doing, such as contacting keycaps or making jewelry, which is something I like to do with this resin. But what we're going to look at is the intracutaneous, so right under the skin first. And I recommend if you are going to be doing any sort of application with these resins where it is contacting skin, to fully read these documents and don't just like watch my video and be like, yep, that's good and just do it. Make your own judgment call because take everything I'm saying here with kind of a grain of salt. I'm interpreting these the best I can, but I'm not a healthcare professional. And I think if you're going to be doing stuff with this resin, you should probably research it yourself also. That said, this document has the entire test report, which pretty much includes everything, um, the purpose, the test controls. So if we look through here, you can see the conclusion of it, which you can read and pause here if you want to see that. Moral of the story is it didn't cause a sensitization after 72 hours. This document also includes how they included everything or how they set up everything. So like the actual resin, they got a sample here. Basically what they do is they grind it up. I assume they grind it up, but they make a solution of sodium chloride, so a saline type of solution and they use the cured resin according to how they say to cure it they put it in that solution and then they inject it in strategic spots under the rabbits with a control group and you know scientific process but what we really care about in this document is if we go down to this grading system you can see that this is how they determined how it would cause an issue or not. So we want to see zeros. You can see no arrhythmia and no oedema, medical words. But you can see that we want zeros. That's basically what we want here. So we can go down to where the test was actually performed, and you can see that after 24, 48, and 72 hours, every single result on every rabbit, every single test subject, you can see is a zero, meaning no sensitization occurred when it was injected under the skin, which is very good. I would assume that if it's injected under the skin, it's a lot more intensive than if it was just a patch on top of the skin. This is the other test, which basically they did the same thing as before. They created a solution of the actual cured material, except this time what they did is they put a patch, you can see patch on the skin, of 24 and 48 hours. And you can see yet again, we see all zeros here on every single test subject. And there's a lot more test subjects on this one. These are actually guinea pigs this time. One thing I found interesting is that you can see the weight range before and after experiment. It actually went up quite substantially after the experiment, so take that for what you will. Maybe it ate more, maybe it was fed more water or something, I don't know. But every single subject pretty much passed and was not sensitized to a patch on the skin either, which is a very good thing. Hopefully this video was insightful to some extent. It wasn't very interesting, I guess, in that sense, but I just wanted to make it to kind of talk about bioresin, specifically Soraya Tech Blue, because I haven't seen a lot of people talking about this, if anyone talking about it. And this is a big thing. If you're gonna be creating things that touch the skin, Resin is not safe even after you cure it. It is safe to handle in quick little bursts and stuff. If you have like a figure and you play with it or a dice or something, but make it so that it say touches your skin all day, like keycaps or a ring, it's not safe with just any old resin. You need a biocompatible resin. Now, typically we're been excluded. We've been excluded to resins that were in the bio field or the medical field that are very expensive. I mean, we're talking 250 to $1,000 a liter, which just isn't viable to make stuff at home for what we want to do. So it's cool that a company like Soraya Tech is selling a $60 resin that has some type of certification for biocompatibility. That being said, it isn't the most solid certification. It pretty much just says that, hey, after 72 hours, this probably won't sensitize your skin, but there's no more long-term like actual results there because typically in the actual ISO certification range, there's different types that the FDA, at least in America, considers. There's a long-term, which is more than 30 days. There's prolonged, which is up to 30 days. Then there's other certifications for things such as like dental implants and internal implants and all that type of stuff. There's all these certifications. 
So this one pretty much has like the bare minimum of, hey, this probably won't sensitize your skin, and that's about it. It doesn't say anything longer term. So if you want to wear something made out of this for 30 days, it is possible you will still encounter issues, but most likely it won't sensitize your skin. So that's that's a big one because the sensitization is the big issue when it comes to resin printing that prolonged contact over time, you'll develop an allergy to the stuff. And then that can lead to issues when you're printing with it or you get some on your skin by mistake and you're not wearing gloves. So it's just good that they have that. Um, I should also mention that this applies only to the cured resin. This does not apply to the liquid resin. To my knowledge, there is not any single existing resin on the market in the bio field or the medical field or the consumer field that is safe to get on your skin over and over when it is liquid. They're all contact sensitizers to my knowledge in that field. Um, so this is specifically saying after you cure it according to their specs. That said, hopefully someone got some use out of this video. Pretty short one, pretty simple one today that I just kind of wanted to talk about because I thought it was pretty cool. And hopefully we'll start seeing other manufacturers doing stuff similar to this and we'll start getting a lot more consumer grade biocompatible resins in the future because that'd be really nice. But with that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.